Hey, Adrian, Grant Putnam here. Thanks for walking me around uh, your new project there in Old Greenwich. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to explain a little bit about the thought process behind the design. Um, so first we gotta think about the, the way that the sun moves. So north is this direction, based on the symbol here, which means east is here, it swings south during the day, so the sun swings this way during the day, and it finishes west over here. All right, so based on that, um, the different plant selections um, were planned on uh, sunlight conditions. Uh, the other thing, uh, the other condition we had to consider was obviously it's near the ocean, so everything has to be salt tolerant. So that would, um, you know, narrow the, the scope of the trees and the shrubs that are available um, that are also salt tolerant. But anything within this design um, fits um, sunlight conditions as well as uh, salt conditions, okay? So along the, the patio, there's a step in the center, this is the lower patio. We suggested using grasses, which kind of give you more of that beach feel. Um, to get some privacy from the neighbors, we suggested putting in privet. Privet is the hedges that you see all over Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, Long Island. Um, it will drop its leaves during the winter, but when you're actually spending time outside um, and you're looking next door, then then it would uh, do the job in regards to providing, you know, roughly call it a six to eight foot tall green wall about eight months out of the year. Now, if you didn't want to um, worry about losing the leaves during the winter, then there are uh, skinny growing arborvitae, which we could also um, plant in that area. All right. Let me just get the screen back, here we go. All right. So moving our way down through here, we had another taller grass that starts green, turns red and turns orange, so it changes color throughout the season. So one, two, three. And by the way, when we send you this email, you're also gonna notice that all the pictures of the plants are on the email as well for you to view. Okay, so we have three purple essence grass. They grow about, uh, Actually, it's about four to five foot tall grass, and this is a tall wall, so it's gonna soften that um, masonry wall for the upper patio where your pool is. And then we ended up uh, suggesting going with uh, Rogosa roses, which are salt, salt tolerant roses. I can get that either white or pink, all right? Um, and those will grow about roughly four feet tall as well to kind of soften that wall that's roughly eight feet tall, all right? As you make your way around the corner, you're gonna end up actually getting a lot of sunlight here as well because it's southern exposure and the sun always swings south during the day. So uh, we have two groups of hydrangea little lime, which are paniculata. Uh, and then the paniculata family do well in uh, a lot of sunlight. Uh, they start blooming end of July all the way till frost. So between a rose and a hydrangea, you can't beat the length of bloom. So roses will start blooming end of May all the way until frost. Uh, hydrangeas start blooming, you know, in July all the way through frost. So uh, there's nothing else that blooms longer as far as a shrub goes. Um, then we had butterfly bush going through here. I'm assuming you're gonna have to leave a door to get underneath the uh, to get underneath this storage space in here. So we left a space for a door. Then we had another type of a grass that grows roughly four to five feet tall. Two Miss Kim lilacs here and here. It's actually pink flowering lilacs. So that's gonna give you a different blooming period. Those bloom end of spring and they're also fragrant. Um, this was the other group of white hydrangeas. They start white, but then during September they turn pink, uh, the flower color of a, of a little lime hydrangea. Little lime grows about five feet tall. There's also something called limelight. Limelight will grow seven to eight feet tall. So there's really two options you could do there. Wasn't sure how tall of a shrub that you wanted, okay. Um, off the corner, this would be an evergreen upright shrub. It's called a Comocypus cripsy, but I can also get that with similar texture and leaf, but in a green color. So that's, there's something also called a Comocypus hinoki. So that's another option. But if you wanna kind of brighten up that area, um, that'd be something nice to kind of frame the corner of the house. You've got the utilities um, box call it right in here, it's a circular box. So over that we are considering putting uh, a container. 
Um, and then the idea with the container would be is uh, you could block that spot where you technically can't put any bushes, so you don't have an open space, so you just don't have an open gap in the landscape, and it allows you to add some color. So we had one container here with annuals and another container over here with annuals to give it balance. All right, I thought that was a good solution. Uh, and then three hydrangea Annabelle here and three hydrangea Invincible we here, which um, both flower white. Um, they start early July um, and they do well in partial sunlight. Cause remember you get Eastern exposure through here. So you only get sunlight until about lunchtime. Two dwarf boxwoods that only grow about 30 inch by 30 inch at max size here and here called boxwood green velvet. Um, perennials for color in here, perennials for color in here, perennials for color in here, perennials for color in here. Now I realize underneath this area, it's ridiculously shady. So I suggested hosta because it's one of the only perennials that grows in a really dense, dense shade. All right, and then these other spots are more uh, for color and interest, whereas the hosta we can get in different varieties and um, the foliage could be really beautiful in regards to having variegated hosta of different, different varieties in this area, okay? Then we have a pumilla grass and a pumilla grass here, which are these black plumes are really pretty. Again, I have a picture on the email for you to take a look at. Uh, on this side, again, Eastern exposure, Viburnum marissi. So that's gonna have a white bloom end of spring, which you'll see in the picture. And it turns bright, the leaves turn bright right in the fall, which also make it pretty. So it has multiple seasons of interest. Um, either Clethra or Fathra Gila in here, which are shade loving plants that would do well against the house to kind of soften the house. And Liriope in here. Uh, and then again, another grass that grows about four, four and a half feet tall, which matches the grass in the back. So um, down here, um, from speaking with you, you know, you know, one idea is obviously if you don't want to see them next door, you could put a row of evergreens, but that's going to be pretty bland, not that interesting. So the other option is we could end up doing columnar growing trees. So six of those that grow, you know, eventually call it, yeah, six to 10 feet wide. This way they're not taking up your driveway space and then plant shrubs in between. So within the quote, I gave you several options for shrub A that could work going in between. And then uh, I, I also suggest using green pillar oak trees, which are these columnar growing oak trees. And again, there's a picture on the email. And uh, the advantage of those, they'll do well in the salt uh, from sea spray on a heavy storms. And, um, and they're gonna grow at the right size, right columnar ha growth habit. Uh, and they turn bright red in the fall and they'll keep their leaves on during really, really late during the season, much longer than most other trees. So that was kind of the thought process there. So that was about everything for now. Of course, we're probably gonna have some multiple iterations, but I'll shoot this over to you and we'll take it from there. Thanks.